It is time for episode number 39. 39. Big chat, film, banter. We present to you our very own selves, myself, Daryl Koo Smith, my beloved friend and co-host, Mr. Chris Picard. However, we'd like to mention planet Earth is dying. We are all dying. We are succumbing to the essence of decomposition thanks to global warming, the rising of waters, the planets turning in succinct rotation against the very settlement of ultraviolet rays that penetrate into the very souls of our brains as we sit here trying so very desperately to deal with the incompetence of leaders worldwide to try their ultimate to destroy what is left of our planet. And so, I would like to dedicate this evening's presentation, episode 39 of Film Banter, the bantering of film, the essence of complete and total talk of cinema. We love cinema, don't we, Chris? We do. I know we do, and that's because we are film banter. We banter about film the best we can. And so, I'd like to dedicate this particular show this evening to our 45th president, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Hello, my friends. Wow. I would like to dedicate tonight's opening ceremony. I'm gonna get you to turn your head a little bit so people can get the full grasp of what we're doing here. What the hell are you doing to me? I want people to see that that is a skeletal hand with well, fingers of course extended. It is, damn it. Well, somebody might not know that. Mr. Trump, we know that people are giving you a massive thumbs down wherever you go. But we would like to point a finger upwards in hopes that perhaps in your miserable trying to keep this planet under your own thumb, we would like to present you with our beloved intro to tonight's show. He is our 45th president, whether we like him or not. And so, what are you doing to me? I'm playing with your finger. Oh, God. <laughs> Please, stop that. I'm getting engorged uh, in are my you... lower region. Have you completed your task? I suppose I have. Okay. So there we go, I appreciate Mr. That. Trump. Thank you. Tonight's show is dedicated to you and precisely how you are running your administration for these past six months. I hope there are no children Five months, watching. actually. So... That's about all I have to say, because I can't breathe anymore. Well, why don't you address your breathing ability, and I'll start with I will you. do such a thing. So now, here's Mr. Chris Picard. He's going to introduce our first... I'm going to be reviewing a film our called Legend. Once again, Donald. Just giving you a little FaceTime here. This is for you, this I'm show. I'm sure he appreciates... I'm sure he's watching right now. Anyway, so, um, Legend is a film with Tom Hardy, the wonderful Tom Hardy, the actor of his generation... Uh, extraordinaire. Um, just couldn't say enough good things about Mr. Tom Hardy. I respect the hell out of him. I think he's a great actor. Very versatile guy. In Legend, he plays two parts. He plays two twin brothers, the Cray brothers, who were famous gangsters in the 1960s in London. And they pretty much ran the underworld for a period of time uh, and just um, were two fascinating guys. So one character that he plays is one brother named Reggie, Reginald. He is... Uh, uh, a very charming, suave kind of a guy. The other one is a absolute loose cannon sociopath, lunatic, with a, a million different problems going on inside of his head. He's got, he is just such a liability to their, their cause. And mm -hmm. so he very much runs amok while the other brother, uh, Reggie, is trying to control his brother, Ron, or Ronald. And um, I was very impressed with um, Tom Hardy's ability to play these two parts. Yeah, um, it's a performance film. That is the draw of this movie. 
you get to see him play these two very different characters, and he plays them with conviction. He plays them very well, and uh, just chews up the scenery in every every turn. It's just um, it's a fascinating character study more than anything. Oh, I agree. Um, it's not. These are the Cray brothers. The Cray brothers, yeah. It's not, you know, the greatest film ever, but it's a very interesting film. I was really into it. I really enjoyed it. Um, in the film, um, the one brother, the main brother, um, Reginald, has a love interest played by the wonderful Emily Browning. She's a, lovely. A nice Australian I actress. I love Emily. She's lovely. She's excellent. Um, she looks very young, even though she's almost 30. She looks like she's 22 or something, you know. She can really play young. Yes. Uh, and she does a good job in this film. She yeah. does a very good job. Uh, there's a fun extended, uh, not, I'm not even going to say it's a cameo, it's about two, three scenes with Chaz Palminteri. He plays uh, an American mobster who's a kind of a middleman for Meyer Lansky, yeah. who's interested in extending his empire now into Now you're not talking about Cher's daughter now. What? Cher's daughter's name is Chaz. Chaz Palminteri. Chaz Palminteri. You're talking about Chaz Palminteri, yeah, right, about Chaz Palminteri the yes. wonderful playwright who wrote a Bronx Tale. Correct. And has did. performed it many, many times yes, on Broadway. Yes, he still does it. He still does it, I know. It was a one-man show. Very true. But anyway, uh, I really recommend Legend. Uh, if, you, if you like Tom Hardy, you'll love it. Uh, if you're interested in gangster films, you like 60s period pieces, I mean, there's a lot to offer here. It was directed by Brian Helgland, who is a very successful screenwriter of LA Confidential. He directed, um, I mean, many films. He directed Payback with, with Mel Gibson. Yeah. Uh, a few other films. I love Payback. Me too. One of my I still want to see that Rogue cut that came out with. The extent, I have the Rogue director's cut. cut. Yeah, I yeah, want to see it. It's not as good. The original cut is it's much better. better. Yeah, I love that film. film. They condensed the film by about thirty, about twenty <clears throat> minutes. They peeled off. Oh, okay. Of it. It's like two hours and seven minutes, and then they made the director's uh, cut. It, it's got a name yeah, to it. So I know. It's called the pay, the whatever Revenge cut or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Nevertheless, yeah. I like that movie. Not but, so great. Uh, you know, I definitely say yes to Legend. Check it out. It's on video, Redbox. Uh, you can get it but pretty much almost big. anywhere. If, well, not so much anymore. I think it's kind of come and gone. I don't uh, know if you can get it that. It might not film. be in a red box, but you it's definitely on Amazon. Amazon, or, It's not on uh, Netflix, I can tell you that. It's not on Netflix, yeah. I got it from my local library, but I'm sure you can get it. If you go to Chris's local library, you're more than likely... You can get your it. Your chances are that you can get it. No, any it. library can get it for you. Can they? Because they have the, the, the all the libraries are connected. They have all kinds of connections, It's man. great. They've got connections. Utilize your local library for stuff. It's great. Don't let them die. So true, indeed. Uh, anyway, a uh, big yes for Legend. I definitely recommend it. It's a performance I saw it myself. all the way. It is indeed. Tom Hardy it's... is fantastic in you this know, movie. You know, it could have been kind of a moody, dark film. They chose not to do it's that. It's more lighthearted. It's got rock music and yeah, I, a lot of 60s know, standards throughout I it. I really got to say that looking back, I saw that film approximately a year and a half ago. I saw it in the theater, as a matter of fact. And I didn't love it. I, I didn't love this film. And I love Tom Hardy. Mm -hmm. And he had just come out with the film where he plays the barkeep, the yeah, pickup. The, the drop-off. The drop-off. Which I liked. It was either the pickup or the drop-off. Yeah, yeah, I liked it too. With uh, Numi Rapace. Well, it also had our... James Gandolfini, one James of his last Gattolfini. roles. I think it might have been his last role. It might have been his last completed role. I think role. it was, yeah. yeah. He did something else uh, Well, because he was filming after. something when he died. He was filming that show for HBO the night of. Oh, okay. And then he... Uh, no, I'm wrong on that. He was doing something else. I apologize. Uh, the night of was uh, doesn't matter. We're all right. Continue. Well, there you go. We're all right. But yeah, I did. I, I like Legend. I, I love Tom Hardy, and I you know he did do that series also that was on FX. Yeah, Taboo. You know, I started I watching. I tried it, to watch and it, and I, uh, I lost couldn't touch. Couldn't get into it. I just couldn't get into it. I was enjoying it. it, but I just got busy with other things. The next film he's in is from uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Nolan. He's in that new. He's film. in Dunker, Dunkirk. Coming in a couple of weeks. Coming in about yeah, a month, in, roughly a month. In, right in July, it's going to be opening up. And, and he's uh, going to be doing the Elton John. Uh, Biography is too. He? He's, He's going to play Elton John. Elton John. I can see that. John. That's pretty good casting. I don't know, but of course, if you want to go back and see anything, the the best film Chris, uh, um, he the, the best film Mr. Tom uh, ever Army. made uh, was of course Bronson. Bronson. Check out Bronson. Just absolutely. That should still be on Netflix. An amazing film. Is it on Netflix? It was as of the last time I oh, checked. I don't know if it is or it's not. Um, but he plays the most notorious criminal in, in the UK history in that film. Bronson. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Check it out. Now, there's a new film that just came out. Uh, it's called Lemmy. And this is also not, not the guy from, from Motorhead. Uh, Motorhead yeah. But there's another Lemmy who's also like another modern day oh, okay. Bronson. And who plays him? I don't know, but it's a brand new film that just came out. I think I, I may have gotten it. I purchased it on, uh, on one of those sites. Uh, a pro probably a few weeks ago. You so. can't remember how many things you buy. I, you know, so this guy spends remember. money like it's so it's water. many things. You know, so uh, it's okay. But anyway, anyway uh, by the way, forward. I do want to mention one brief thing. Uh, okay. Just a shout out because we did have uh, Father's Day recently. But please, let's let's always remember your mother. 
because she's very important to all of us and uh, and all those people out there who have mothers uh, bless them as always ladies and gentlemen and with that we move on we're going to move on to our second film I did like Legend 2. I did see this film. Um, I didn't love Legend as much as you did, if we may just recap that for a brief millisecond. Uh, it, 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 was, it was just okay for me. But yes. Um, I didn't love it. I liked it quite a bit. You There's know, a it is a performance there. movie. And I love little What's-Her-Face. And I was very... Emily Brown. I love little Emily. What She's, else had she been in? Uh, she was in, well, Sucker Punch. She was a big one for her. Was that her main film? She was the main star? She was the main star. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, she was, was in... Sl um, she looks totally different. She did a version of, I believe, Sleeping Beauty that was like an R-rated sex movie. Oh, wow. Um, she's done quite a few films. Okay. Yeah, she was she uh, Apparently right now, she's appearing on that show on Stars, American Gods, with uh, Ian McShane. Okay. I do love Sucker Punch, by the way. You know, it's not it's for everybody. It's a fun, everybody. guilty pleasure. It's a strange little yeah. film. But it has these fantasy segments in the middle that are just spectacular. It's, it's outrageous. It's an interesting movie. All right, we're going to move on to our next film. This is Wesley Snipes. He's back in action again. He's here. He's been gone. He's been through tax evasion. He's been evading his taxes. And, uh, of course, he's back. Well, he was in jail for a certain amount of time. He was in jail, yeah. And then when he I came mean, out, he was did... Was uh, six months or even no, a year? No, he was in there over a year. I think he was sure. in over yeah. a year. And then he came back and did the, the third Expendables film. So there you go. Well, I'll tell you something. He looks spectacular. Yeah. This is, by the way, noticed. the name of the movie we're talking about is called The Recall. Oh, yes. I thought I said that. You didn't, didn't say I? the title. No, I didn't. Well, it's a good thing you you're here. You segued into Wesley Snipes. You know, it's a good thing you're here, because if you weren't, I'd just be talking to myself. I know. But uh, it's quite true. The Recall, it's out. This this movie started out probably as a horror film, mm -hmm. and then it blended into a... And the horror film where the kids go to the cabin... Of course. ...and start, we start you know, they want to disappear. They're going to start going into oblivion. Uh, I noticed we have a few viewers out there. Did you put it in so people can uh, bring us, or no? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't say no. So yeah. So if we want to stop, we would say hold calls. Oh, okay. Oh, in other words, so uh, so we, people want to call us. They we did call, activate the call feature. You can feature. call in if you'd like to say hello. Um, hopefully it'll work. Yeah, We've done it a while. You uh, can talk to a celebrity here, or my my friend Chris. You can talk to him too. Yes. And uh, but anyway, let's get back to the recall. Uh, is it a great movie? <laughs> it, it, it kind of is. Kind of very entertaining. I like this film. Uh, Wesley's kind of a loner. He mm -hmm. was abducted by aliens years ago. Oh my goodness! Yes. So now, and he was apparently uh, he, he got you know he was singing like a Bee Gee for a while there because they you know they did one of those <laughs> they did one of those probes there. But they it, it's kind of cool. Everybody who was abducted by these aliens gets this very bizarre <coughs> kind of tattoo from the aliens, oh. where their skin literally is embossed. Cool. It's like raised, yeah, but in awful. a really cool design. Okay. Yeah, so he was a general in the, not a general, he was like a corporal in the army, so he gave, got special attention, so he gets an arm thing and a chest thing, and but it was kind of cool in a way. But Wesley lives in very, he's a loner, he lives out in this, this, this cabin near where the kids, or their cabin okay. is. So um, they have a run-in with him at a gas station before they get to their cabin, of okay. course. And, uh, but now, in the meantime, um, this massive ship, is coming down from the heavens, coming down from the skies, from mm -hmm. some other planet, obviously, and begins to suck uh, <laughs> some of the kids and is sucking thousands of people around the oh, world. Wow. We don't okay, see this. Cool. But they're sucking sounds these good. people. It sounds like uh, like the film, uh, the, the Australian film. Remember the Australian movie with the hovering craft? Uh, the very first one. Are you uh, talking about the miniseries V? No, I'm talking about the movie that was what made Australian? in Australian film. Oh, are you talking about Skyline? No. That came out a few years ago? No, no, no. No. I don't remember an Australian yes, alien abduction you do. film. Oh, it was great. It was a, I, I don't believe it was an abduction film, but the, the craft was just hovering in the sky, and it was just there. It was in Australia, mate, and uh, it doesn't matter. I, I don't, that doesn't we'll get to it at a later time, perhaps, if I can, you know. Call us if you know what he's talking about. Reconstitute my constitution. Uh, the Recall, is, so is, it, it? is it a great film? It's not a great film by any means. It's kind of bullshit. It's kind of, kind of, but I was entertained by it. It was so good to see Wesley again. So I'm going to give it a yes. Okay. I'm going to give like it Wesley. a moderate yes, just because it, it was kind of cool. We have the son. Uh, we did talk about his name. I believe it's R.J. R.J. Mitty. R.J. Mitt. From Breaking -T -T -E. Bad. M-I-T-T-E. He's from Breaking Bad. He He's played a, a cerebral palsy son. Of Walter White, played by Brian Cranston, and I believe he has cerebral palsy in real life. I believe he does have cerebral palsy in real life. How's However, he look in this one? He looks really good in this film. Yeah, I, I didn't notice the cerebral palsy so much. Okay, uh, he does have moments there where he stifles himself and he stops dead in his tracks, and 
you see in a little bit of a speech impediment from time to time, but basically he holds it together I'm glad he's well. still getting work. I think he's getting... Uh, That's I, good. Yeah, me too. I'm glad he's getting work. And he plays kind of the nerdy photographer in this, so okay. I think he pulled it off. Good. Uh, and uh, that's about that. And speaking of pulling it off, uh, no, let's not go there. But but hey, but uh, but seriously, uh, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna move on now. I think we are done with the recall. Okay, well, I'm I gonna, recommend that you see it. It I sounds think, really I think good. You might like I'd like it. to check yeah, it out. Yeah, it's, 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 I like alien movies. I like I like Wesley. It's a bubblegum for the brain kind of film all the way. You know, this okay. is just uh, mental masturbation, as one would say. Uh, so there you go, folks. Right. Uh, the recall. Okay. I give it a mild yes. All right, so number three tonight, um, I'm going to do Mechanic Resurrection, the sequel to Jason Statham's 2011 film, The Mechanic. Okay. Which in itself was based, was based on the film with Charles Bronson from the mid-70s or whatever. And Jan Michael and Jan Vincent. And Jan Michael Vincent, yeah. yes, who has who pretty much since, disappeared from well, cinema. he died. He's dead? He de he's when quite he dead, man. Jan Michael Vincent died. He became an alcoholic, a bad a drug one. user too. Right? Drug user, yeah. and he died. I'm going to say maybe 15 years ago. The last thing I saw him in. I'll check him out here yeah. while you're. He was you in. Can move um, on to your next I video. think he was in that movie, Buffalo '66 with Vincent Gallo. Really? If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, anyway. Oh, I remember that movie. Yeah, yeah Vincent Gallo. Yeah. Well, he's from Brown Bunny, of course. Yeah, Brown oh, Bunny. Oh, oh. Yeah. All right. There so, you go. Mechanic Resurrection. Um, the, the mechanic, the, the first one was about Statham, be, he basically is a hitman, right? Yeah. So this one picks up a few months, less than a year after the first one ends, and he's in seclusion. He doesn't want to be hitman anymore. You know how it goes. Leave my life behind, and then he gets pulled back into the oh, life. Oh, wait a minute. I stand corrected. J. Michael think, Vincent is still I alive. I didn't think he died. He's 72 years old, but man, he was in yeah. bad shape the last yeah. I saw him. Yeah, no, he didn't look good. No, he um, did not look good. So anyway, him. this is one of those movies where your, the past comes back to get him. Um, but whereas the first mechanic was very much isolated, I believe, in like New Orleans, Louisiana area, this film is very global. It starts out in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. We jump... Uh, I believe we go to uh, Malaysia or one of those countries oh, over there. Right. Then we're in Thailand for a good period of time. And then I believe the film, then we're in um, Australia. Uh -huh. So it's very much um, global in its span. They're Did trying to make it a bigger uh, film. Now, of course, Mr. Mr. Statham, Statham, you know, he pretty much gives the same performance every time. Yeah, I, mean, I love Jason Statham, but uh, he's, he's Jason Statham in everything he does. Everything he does. But he's good at playing Jason Statham. I think he's one of the he's best. He's a good action star. He's um, got a lot of physicality to him. He does. He does his own stunts, which is great. I love it. Um, he was great in Spy. Yeah, I love that. Loved him in he's Spy. He's going to be back he in actually, the sequel. Uh, they doing? No, are they yeah. doing a sequel? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I enjoyed this film. I thought the first one was probably a little better. Okay. It was more dramatic. It had that camaraderie, um, or should I say almost rivalry, between him and Ben Foster, his protege in that film. Okay, right. I like that element. I think Ben Foster is also a great actor. Yeah, yeah. This one, it's him with J trying to save Jessica Alba the whole time. Um, Jessica is always a magnificent yeah, no, she looks specimen great. of uh, female she, Her character is kind of tough because she was also a U.S. Uh, some kind of operative at one point. Okay. She was in the military, so her character does some fighting. Yeah, yeah. And then we got Tommy Lee Jones that shows up in a supporting role, which is kind of fun. Yeah. He plays an arms dealer. Uh, so the premise is him. He has to an old guy from um, Statham's past is trying to get him to knock off three of his competitors in terms of uh, dr uh, gun running, that kind of a thing. I wish we could knock off three of our competitors here on... Uh, Would be nice. Here Plenty on of film them. banter, yeah. Um, but anyway... We've got thousands and thousands of them. I know, them there's a lot of people like out there to, doing like what we're doing. murder every one of them. We're very unique. Yes. So do. anyway, I enjoyed the, the mechanic. Um, it had a lot of really cool outlandish... Action sequences. It did actually. There was that it one did. where he's in that high rise in Sydney. I and know. The guy he has does a those, Tom Cruise. Yeah, and he's, he's got a swimming the pool that extends from the side of the building. Right. Yeah. And so he's got to kill somebody that's in that. And um, it was there's a fun. chase scene on the famous Sugarloaf Mountain in Rio, uh, or also known as Pão de Açúcar in Portuguese. God bless you. I'm and sorry. he's jumping on the cable cars. I mean, so yeah. there's a lot of great action in this movie. And for that, I definitely recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It is if a you lot like of the fun. first one, if you like Statham, you'll love it. So I'm giving it a yes, just for a pure, yeah, as you would a... say, leave your brain at the door. There you go. Action film. Yeah, but it's there's a lot nothing of fun. much to it. It goes by in the in the wink Quick, of an eye. And it's, it's uh, good. action. It, it, yeah. it always holds your attention, and that's all we can really ask of an action. Yeah, you film. you ignore the implausibilities and Absolutely. just enjoy it. So Absolutely. for that, it's a yes. Totally um, true, indeed. So now we're going to go move on to our fourth film. You're going to do a film called Brain on Fire. I am. I was going to set my head on fire for this particular review, but I've decided against that, only because it might kill me. Yes. 
And I'd have to lose this your amazing... Your hair is already red. amazing so. head of hair. So your mane. Yes. Many people say to me, is that your real hair? And I have to say, yes, it is. <laughs> it is indeed. Actually, well, actually, I got my hair cut the other day. I got mine cut yesterday. Did you? Yeah. I got mine cut on Sunday. It's hard to believe, but true. Can't tell. But I did. I paid $20 to have them just thin out the side so I didn't look like Bozo the Clown every time I wake up in the morning. But And the guy walks over to me as I walk in the door. He goes, wait a minute. He comes up and he starts pulling on my hair and he says, I just had to make sure it was real. That's great. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. So All right, here we go. Brain on Fire. This is the new Chloe Grace uh, Moritz. Moritz film. Chloe Grace Moritz. Of course, we know her from Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass 2. And she was uh, in, uh, she was the, also second. in uh, the Fifth Wave. Which sec I, yes, she I was. enjoyed the fifth I wave, believe it or not. A little sci-fi film had a horrible ending. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminded me of those insurgent films yes, yes, a little yes. bit. With, it's uh, the same genre. Same kind of genre, yeah. same kind of young adults in crisis against the world mm -hmm. uh, in, in degradation, as Mr. Trump will have you joyous about. She was also in the, the remake of Carrie. She oh, was she in was. also most I recently... I didn't love that one. Yeah, I didn't care for it. I didn't uh, She that. was also in the remake of um, uh, Don't Let... It's called Let Me In, but the oh, original oh. was called the original Let was the Right Danish. One In. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Vampire film. I like that. Yeah. I, 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 and I thought her version was pretty good, too. I, th I thought the American version... She's just version a strong actress. ...was not She's as great. good as the Danish version, mm -hmm. which, you know, there's just something about... Uh, you know, of course, we had just gotten the girl with from the Dragon Tattoo, with the Dragon Tattoo, the whole yeah. trilogy from them You're from right. Denmark. So, And, of course, those wonderful films that you and I saw... The uh, Department Q. Department Q movies. Yes. Oh my God! Yes. If you got Netflix, you got to check Netflix. them out. They're on Netflix. There's three of them. Spectacular. We reviewed them about ten weeks ago. Subtitles galore, but very much of a Hannibal Lecter feeling. Yeah, and the just investigative severe films. They're good. Serial killer crapola, which I just check out. Department Q. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it again. But anyway, Brain on Fire. Brain on Fire is about a young woman who is going through her life. She works at the New York Post. Okay. Uh, her editor is none other than Tyler Perry. Oh. Tyler Perry is, uh, has the utmost of faith and trust in her yes. and wants her to interview a senator who's coming into the office. She's well respected. Everybody loves her. She's one of the gang. We slowly begin to see her unravel. Yes. Her brain just, something is happening to okay. her. And of course, we know that because we read the title of the film yes. called Brain on Fire. That's why we came to watch the movie in the first place, because we know something is going to happen to this poor girl. And of course, it does. Okay. She experiences a brain disease which only like one, one millimeter of 3% of the population are, are absolute. Mm -hmm. It might be more than that, but literally 4 or 5% of the population can actually get this. That's what and we call the unlucky lottery. Precisely so. Uh, I remember Dudley Moore, I believe, had this very same oh, thing. Oh, did he? He did. His brain literally, but they didn't have any... They, now they have a cure for it. They oh. have an antibiotic that you can Great. take, and it just... Uh, and they also have to do a little... They, they did have to do a brain biopsy on poor little Oof. Chloe Moritz, you know, I hope. I know she's a method actor, so Chloe, I hope you didn't have to, you know, literally get your brain scalped off to do this. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, man. This girl can act. She's fantastic. She is good. She's she a great little actress. She her all. I knew from Kick-Ass I mean, she was a great actress. Yeah, well, you knew that because she plays she just a, stole an the adult. Movie. She, yeah. she stole the first one. The second one, I didn't love so you much. You know, I still haven't seen the second one. You don't want to see it. Yeah. You don't want to see Jim it. Jim uh, Jim Carrey is in the second one, but th that's not the point. It just she was the first film. She was, and she I stops agree. because of her moral aspect. All of a sudden, she doesn't want to be the kick-ass that she was in the first one. I see. So she denies herself that privilege and denies we, the audience, and seeing her kicking more ass. Therefore, the film yeah. sucked donkey wazoo. I must be honest. It, it's, <laughs> if you've ever had a donkey wazoo, it's a very smelly thing to to experience. But um, I'll tell you, Chloe's great in this film. We see her unravel. We don't know what it is. She's getting all the tests at the doctors, and they're, you know, four different doctors are seeing her, and they can't seem to. Everything comes back negative. She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. In the meantime, she's, you know, rolling yeah. on the ground. Don't say too much. She's sputtering. Good. Well, she's, you know, we see her, you know, going through this decomposition yeah. of brain where she can't control herself. Okay. So something's got to give, and uh, it's basically, it's basically us, the viewer. Yeah. We. We, uh, you know, I was reading some of the reviews on IMDb, and a lot of people, you know, these kind of films are very difficult to watch. You know, you know what you're getting. You know that it's a sickness film. Yeah. Uh, is it going to be a happy ending, or is it not going to be a happy ending? That's, That's basically the gist of what mm -hmm. we're, what we have to come to grips with when we we see a film like this. So I'm not going to tell you whether it's a happy or a, or or a sad ending, but okay. it's a well done film. 
I was moved. I, I felt, you know, little tears welling up in my, my porous little brain. And uh, I, I felt as though, you know, it's funny, but while you're watching a movie like this, you almost start to think, you know, I feel a little strange like that. <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit of a hypochondriac, so. Yeah. Oh, are you really? I, it's true. I, uh, I, I, every, from time to time I am, but, uh, and there's no even reason to do a badumch. So I'm just yes? doing it for the place. Absolutely, it's a yes. I enjoyed this film. I, I don't know if I can recommend it to everybody. You know, it's 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 a it's a sickness film. So, you know, if you if you like a good sickness movie and you want to, you know, uh, you want to whip out the the Kleenex for, a, 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 you know, an hour and a half. Uh, it's only an hour and a half. So, uh, okay. you know, it was it was all right. All right. All right. Number five. We're I'm gonna go right into the eyes uh, on me. The thriller of the of the week. Yes. Is our main two theater. Yes. In uh, theaters now. Just theater opened premieres. up last weekend. Just opened up. Eyes last on me. The Correct. Tupac Shakur. Biopic, yeah, um, starring uh, first-time actor Demetrius Ship Jr. Demetrius Ship Jr. There you go. Who has an uncanny resemblance to Tupac Shakur, I must say. He looks a little on the chubby side. He looks like a chubby Tupac. No, he's not. He's got six-pack. No, I'm talking about his face. He's got. A I kind mean, of does a, he have a wide face? Maybe I didn't really know. A this. little bit of a chubescent Tupac. I don't think he looks as sharp as Chup Maybe as not. Tupac. Maybe not. But, but he go. looks like he's a he's enough of a likeness to make it work in the film. Oh, he does. It does yeah, work. I think so. Okay. Um, so I, you know, this is a film about um, Tupac Shakur, his rise to fame, and unfortunately, we all know he he was gunned down and killed. He was gunned down uh, in Las Vegas, and so um, you know, going into this movie. You know, I didn't really know much about Tupac. I mean, I always knew of him, heard a lot about him. He was ref he's been referenced so much. Could you sing us a Tupac song? Not right even now? for a second, no. <laughs> um, Nor could I. Yeah, yeah. He was he was definitely, you know, mentioned a lot, I believe, in um, the wonderful Straight Out of Compton, which I thought was a fabulous movie. Love that. And film. again, I went into that not knowing much about NWA okay. other than the presence of Ice Cube, and a lot of the other people that were peppered throughout the film, I knew who they were, but I didn't know their music really. You know, that's not my genre. That's one of the few genres yes. I'm not really into. However, as I was watching Compton, and as I was watching Eyes on Me, I would find my foot move into some of the tunes. You know, there's catchy tunes in there. Everybody knows that I got a big nose. Yeah, I mean, it's not... And they not... do the riffs and a jack. Uh -huh. What are you doing? Uh, what are you no, it's pretty good, and the lyrics are always kind of sharp and rhymey and poignant, and, you know, there's a lot of deep Tupac especially wrote a lot about a lot of deep stuff and uh, a lot of yeah. black culture was referenced in in uh, you know throughout the movie and his music and of it's course in the music where uh, it's in the our, culture our black brothers are able to use the n word with they complete are. and total veracity they yeah. can use it as though it and I you talking know what I don't care they've earned it I, I know I suppose it. they've earned it yeah. use it I don't after care after four hundred um, years they communicate with each other you know the different rivalries East Coast West Coast they were they did this in Compton as well where East they rap Coast, about each West other Coast. but it's kind of like they're fighting within their albums exactly, you know, against yeah, each exactly, other exactly mofo um, so. Wait, this is a... They um, like bogs. They do bogs. They do. I'm going to pass right now. Oh, okay. I have to do this review. I'm terribly sorry. Maybe later. Um, but, you know, this film is a little long. Two I hours and 20 minutes long. They could have so. easily chopped, I think, about 20 minutes out. They I, I, I was squirming a little bit in the middle. But, however, it came around for me. And uh, it's a yes because I enjoyed it. I think it's an important film for people that... Um, are students of, of music, especially if you like hip hop. Um, you know, I think not many people do. Well, the, the the black culture loves it. Well, the black culture and the young the African American cult, community the young white culture loves will it. like this movie. There's a lot of when you watch the MTV Music Awards. Yeah, no, that's all it is. Is black. There's black music. That and there's a lot of Caucasian people that love this music, love music as well. Jack. That's fine. That's the way it is. So for for that aspect of it, I definitely recommend it as a companion to Compton. Although I don't think okay. it's as Compelling of a film as yeah. that. It's still a good film. I love Compton. It's a good film. I just think Compton was just there's a little bit more greatness Compton to it. Compton was like a Godfather film. Yeah, it really that was. That was an ensemble film. It really was. Where this sounds more like a character performance. It's him, piece. but there's a lot of other characters. Okay. You know, a lot of famous uh, right. people are played by other actors in this film. A lot of the, you know, the woodwork. Yeah, I mean, you know, Snoop Dogg is featured. Uh, the villainous Shook Knight is featured. Ah. Uh, you have. Um, you know, I think you know all the big names. A lot of the big names from that. Doctor Dre. Doctor Dre. A lot of period. A Ice reference Cube. or a scene in the film. Ice, Ice Cube is not. Ice oh, T is no. not. But there's B. I. Notorious B. I. G. is a character in this film. Ice T. Uh, he's not in this. No. no could you get me an Ice T? Uh, uh, after the show. Oh, okay. Yes. 
So, but I will say this, for a first-time actor, this guy, Demetrius Ship Jr., did a really good job, I thought. Did he? Okay. I thought he did a good job. I thought he handled the role very well. I believed it's it. not just a look-alike. No, no, actually, he actually can act. And does, you know, I don't even know what Tupac Shakur was like. Um, I, I don't know anything about the man. He was I, kind of, I want to say, a mixture of fury with mild-manneredness, because okay. he was very, um, from what I can see in the film, very well-spoken, um, very much cared about um, bringing a movement to um, yeah. elevate the culture, to fight against the injustices of the system. Ah. Uh, but he got moments where he was he could be a hothead, and he wanted no. revenge on the people that were doing him wrong or doing those that he cared about wrong. Live by the gun. Die by the gun. Die That's by true. the gun. Um, who really stands out also in this film is the actress that plays his mother. Ah. And I wrote her name down. Uh, Danai Gurira is her name, I believe. I, I probably didn't say it right. Well, that's but right. she's in um, the Black Panther film coming out. She is in... Coming out? The Black Panther movie that's coming out. The oh, that's Marvel. coming out. Oh, the Marvel oh. Black Panther film. She's in oh, that. Oh, okay. And we're going to start Starring seeing a lot of the guy of from uh, the Black... The, who plays the Black Panther in the... In the previous, Civil War, uh, correct. Yeah, yeah. And I think she was in that also. Oh, was she? Yeah, and then and like, those so. characters also are going to carry on into the next Avengers oh, from okay. Infinity War. Beside the yeah, point, yeah, yeah. she's very good in this film. She's very good. I could see her performance being a nominated one. Really? It wouldn't surprise me, supporting actress. Okay. Um, so, overall, I enjoyed the film. Yeah. I give it a yes. And uh, right, I think I it's definitely uh, worth seeing. Okay. With a caveat that it is a little long. Um, so, be well, prepared you know, for that. Well, uh, you know, listen, I'm sure Tupac was a little long himself. You know, the brothers are hung where well. you don't want to cut any off. <laughs> you understand? So maybe it is two hours and 20 minutes. You don't want to cut nothing off, Jack. Yeah, you they're, they're, they're gifted in certain areas. You don't want to circumcise nothing, that, Jack. You know, listen, it's hard dragging your, dragging, you know, the hood of your, the, the your member off the floor. And, yeah. You know, uh... Anyway. So, uh, I always remember uh, Andrew Dice Clay, he'd always... <laughs> Whenever he'd make a joke about, you know, he'd, he'd, there'd be, you know, a black audience member, he'd go, hey, Moby, how you doing over there, you yeah, know, yeah. and so he, you know, and Moby, my friend Moby, you know, he's got the biggest in town, mm -hmm. hey, just throw it up here on the stage, Moby. Anyway, there we uh, go. Steve Harvey had a really good joke about that, too, where he would, like, walk in and throw it over his shoulder. Oh, really? It was funny. I love Steve Harvey. He's great. I think he's All right. Uh, number six tonight. You're number going six to do tonight, in theaters. I did go see. I went to the theater. So you loved, you liked or? I, liked, I didn't love it. I liked moderately it. Moderately, I would say, yes. I loved Straight Outta Compton. I liked Eyes on Me. You want, I don't want you to compare it to that. This well, is no, a no. It will, yeah, but it will be compared. Okay. People will compare the two. All they, right. they have to. Because it's they the, do? Well, because the stories are almost intertwined. Oh, okay. Because the characters were all clashing at the exact same time and rising and falling at the same time. Yeah. Suge Knight is such a powerful figure in that period with all these people. Is Suge he, Knight in the uh, company? He's in company. He's oh, a he's big a, presence. He's a real jerk in that. He is a yeah, nasty... He's a bad he's guy. A villain. He's a bad guy. He's a gangster. Yeah, he is. He's a gangster who runs a record label, Death Row Records. He's the guy who he's ran scary, over... In real life, he ran he over did. these guys. He did. And this actually he's a happened. scary it's son of a bitch. It's got to be about a year and a half ago. Yeah. He's been in jail, too. He might even be in jail. No, he is in jail yeah. right now. He's a scary oh, guy. Oh, yeah, he's definitely in jail. Intimidating big guy. Yes, indeed. Uh, but anyway, um, on to Rough Night. Well, let us move on to Rough Night. This is the new uh, five-woman uh, hangover, hangover, yeah. hangover part four, if you will, starring Scarlett Johansson. We have this uh, uh, something or other Bell. Jamie that, Bell. Jamie Bell. Who's very funny. Who's very funny. She's, she was in Fist Fight, like we mentioned. Kind of steals the show to some extent. She does. She's the Chubesque woman who yes. is, uh, she's the more, uh, she's kind of instigating this entire. She's like the Zach Galifianakis of The Hangover. There films. you go. She's that's kind presence. of getting everybody to in be trouble. crazed and in then trouble. Then you have Kate McKinnon in this film, Kate who's McKinnon always great. Kate McKinnon plays an Aussie, mate. And she's, I like Kate. I, th I thought she was a bit wasted. I, I, I kind of wish she hadn't. Played this Australian thing the way she did. It looks uh, to me like I, she sells it though. She, she does looked, sell it. I, I would believe her as no, an No, I thought she was good. Uh, I, I thought she was good. I just thought it didn't fit in with the with the other girls so much. But neither here nor there. Uh, it's a funny little movie. Is it a chick flick? Of course it is. Yeah. Uh, I am not a chick. However, I sat there. There were, there were only two people in the audience. Me and this older lady. Uh, oh. I say older lady. I'm probably older than she was. But the, regardless. I laughed out loud, I would say probably about ten or ten times or well, so. that's a good thing. You it get wasn't ten good bad. Laughs. The beautiful, magnificent, little Zoe, 
Um, Kravitz. She She's in is this. so. She looks lovely. so different in this movie. Oh too. my god! Well, we just saw her in, uh, in uh, a few in weeks ago. Jack and Jill, the Vincent other and way, Roxy. Vincent and Roxy, which we both liked. Yes, I agree. We both liked that film, and she plays Roxy. She's she kind of a you know a, a, a young maniac woman who's trying to avenge her brother's death in that yes. movie. In this movie, she's kind of the hot chick, really. Yeah. And she's divorcing her husband at the beginning. She leaves her three-year-old there with him. But uh, there's a great scene with uh, Demi Moore and... Uh, oh, Demi Moore shows Demi up. Demi Moore is in this, and she's quite naked, actually. She's kind of laying there. We see her naked just for a brief milla moment. Really? Uh, yeah, you do see her... Didn't expect uh, that. Yeah, I know. I, you know, the last time I saw Demi naked was in Striptease. Striptease. Uh, Burt Reynolds from 20 yeah, years ago. I liked ago. that movie. I thought it was an it's okay film. Movie. I, I didn't love that Guilty film. Guilty pleasure big time. Uh, it's kind of, sort of. But it, just to watch Demi spin around Sante. a pole was, uh, you know. But she's uh, got the fake and if ever, you, know, uh, you want a pole, I got a pole for you, Demi. You can spin around any time as long as I got a face. You got a place to sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. seriously, um, and the guy who was the father in uh, Modern Family, whose name escapes well, me. Well, which, like a which is a bunch Carell. of... No, he's the father of... Uh, He's oh, Ty, Ty Burrell. Ty something? Burrell, that's the man. Yeah, I've seen him. He also he plays. Uh, they're like a sex trace couple. He and Demi, who live next door to the house that, that the five renting. girls move into. That's cool. Um, we have a stripper who comes to the house. They inadvertently he gets killed. Uh, he gets yeah. killed. They they knock him. The, it's the, like that movie, Very Bad Things. Exactly, and it's also got a kind of a weekend at Bernie's kind okay. of feel to it, yeah. where you know they end up having to drag his body around. They're yeah, trying yeah, to get yeah. rid of it, and then uh, other little invariables little ensue happen. that bring things around to full circle, and yet back. And of course, her boyfriend, uh, uh, she's about to get married, uh, or Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. She's the girl of she's honor. She's the bachelorette this, party. She's right? the bachelorette party. Yeah. This is her her bachelorette her party, weekend. basically her big weekend. So. Okay. I, you know, uh, it was, um, I, I don't know, looking back on it, I think I probably would have enjoyed it more had there been an audience there. But I'm an audience unto my own. I watched many yeah. a film by my uh, myself, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it, it is what it is. It offers what it offers. You know what you're getting when you walk in. I actually like something like Bad Moms, yeah, an alternate that was good. chick flick. Uh, and it just stars a uh, little uh, um, uh, Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis, who I uh, just love. She's great. Black Swan, married to Mr. Family Mr. Guy. Kusher, of course. Aston. But uh, you know, um, I I I I didn't love this movie. I'm going to give it a yes because I I think that that many people out there who are watching this show, and I see there's not too many of you tonight, by the way, and I'm going to scold you all for that. Well, you know what? Kids are getting out of school. They're busy doing other They're things. They're busy this doing week. other things. They couldn't give a damn about watching this stupid show. But you know something? Uh, I I think most people are going to enjoy this this film. So even though I didn't enjoy it as much as the target audience, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not in that. Uh, uh, 17 to 35 female demographic that is probably probably 17 to 45 or 50 year old. Um, it's a chick flick. There's no question about it. But uh, but just as pure entertainment, it was entertaining. Okay. So I I enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it a yes. Absolutely. Uh, always a pleasure to watch Scarlet. Yes. I I I, I don't like her new Q-tip hairstyle. The however. short hair. I like her with the longer hair. I like her with the hair she's got in the uh, Marvel movies. The the. Uh, yeah. I I really do. I like her just looking a little. Well, bit. I'm sure she's taking notes on your opinion and she'll change. I'm it. sure she could give a rat's ass about anything I say. But uh, I thought she was. Sometimes I, women like. To have short hair. I think I they mean, do. Some, you know, having long hair gets to be a drag. Well, what happens? Every woman you ever know, by the time she hits uh, her thirties, or if she has a, a child, or whatever, they always cut their hair off because it's just too much trouble to do the whole makeup and the hair thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just common throughout life. I have mean, you ever had short hair? Who me? I haven't known you to have anything but this haircut. I've always had this haircut to some extent. It's true. I'd like to yeah. see you with a crew cut. You'd look like a totally no, I different look, person. I would. I'd look like. A, you would. You would look. I'd look like, like a marine. Damn it! I, uh, I think a, you'd look like a child, a baby salamander. A baby salamander. You would have this weird flowing. Grease, I don't want like greasy, but well, there's going to be greasy. There's going to there's going to be a slick. No, but your your structure of your whole head and body, it's going to be the very reptilian. Well, I'm rather long, gangly, to kind of a gangly. I know. Well, I look like a praying mantis. You I could see. fit in a wetsuit beautifully. If I take my shirt off, my arms are so thin. I, I look like a praying mantis. Praying mantis. You know who is? You know the praying mantis. They pray. They, I've you know I've never seen your arms. And you never will. Actually, I've known I this man did. once. No, you once, did when you I, played the drums. I played the drums. The only time I saw you short sleeved. How was? I as a drummer. You were good. 
Was I spectacular or was I just okay? You were good. I mean, you were a good drummer. Well, thank you very much. I, I would say well, you're thank good. You. Thank you. You very kept much. up with ELP very well. I did. I'll play Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. They're very hard to play. Of course, none of you out there know who they are, you except did a good job. for a, a few of you. But, uh, you know, I haven't really played since uh, Keith Emerson. Uh, I thought you were going to put your phone on I side. thought I did, but apparently I didn't. So Who's Oh, that's your, your that's nephew. My who's calling. nephew's calling me. Yeah. If he's watching, bad no, time. He's buddy. not watching. I know. Uh, but, but I do love that ringtone. Thank smooth you. guitar. I know, it's a smooth, kind of nice going, easy flowing jazz, kind of spicy, pink floor yeah. little guitar there. But anyway, I'm why don't we um, yeah. continue forth? I am going to do, uh, assuming you're done with Rough Night. You're am done, I right? done with Rough Night? Are you done? I suppose I am. Okay. Number seven tonight is The Exception, uh, now playing in theaters. I in, saw the film also. In limited release. I did. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to see it. Christopher Plummer. Christopher Plummer uh, is in the film. Um, the star of the film, the, the lead, is Jai Courtney. He is an Australian actor who's been in quite a few things. Most recently, uh, he was in the last attempt at a reboot of the Terminator franchise. This is a Nazi. Oh, he was the one running around with our beloved uh, Khaleesi. Yeah, he played the new John okay. Connor. No, 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 Kyle Reese. He was Jacal Reese. The soldier from the right, future. Right, right, right. Okay, no. Um, yeah, so he, he was the uh, he was the Michael Bane. Correct. Role. Yeah. I see. He was also. Uh, We're talking about Genesis now, Terminator. Yeah. Yes. Um, and he was also Bruce Willis's son in, I believe, uh, the, the the latest Die Hard. Um, the, 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 Live free or die. The, no, no. A good day to die hard. The one that took place in Russia hard. with his son. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was okay. I like that film. Uh, it was okay. It was a little short, but I. Yeah. Liked it. it was all right. Yeah. I just don't like when they take R-rated action films and they make them PG-13. I don't like that. Stupid either. idea. I think it so got too. a lot of backlash. Um. Anyway, so this film it takes place in 1940, uh, right during World War II. The Nazis are just ramping it's everything at the very up. Beginning. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, right World in the War beginning. II. Yeah, because yeah, the, the the war started in thirty nine, so this is forty. Adolf so they're just is, gearing uh, up, just coming into power. Yes, basically. and so the film stars um, Jack Courtney. He is a soldier that is sent to the Netherlands to look after and to potentially get information from the exiled ex Kaiser Kaiser of Wilhelm Wil Wilhelm correct uh, of World War One from Germany. Played he is by Christopher Plummer. Christopher Plummer. He is the remaining. Element of the old monarchy. He's the old school man. Yes, he the has, old royal uh, family. It, do they want to kill him off, or do they want to? Uh, that's what they're trying uh, bring to bring him. Out. Uh, he kind of. Uh, that's how Hitler actually rose to power. Yeah. Was because uh, in World War One the Germans lost. They did very badly. And he ran and to the everybody Kaiser, else. Yeah. The Kaiser was actually to, to blame for that. Yeah. Well, of course they blame him. They blame him because the, he's the scapegoat. Yeah, he's the scapegoat because everybody else came in and, and annihilated the Correct. Germans in World War One as. Thank God they did it in World War II also. Although I don't think, and, and this is what I was mentioning to uh, somebody last night, uh, or this morning, whatever, about when I was talking about this film, was that, you know, my, at least my public education and my own, you know, education, like, we weren't really taught much about World War One. They instilled in us, you know, World War Two, World War Two. you know, well, the Depression, the New Deal. Yeah, true. We didn't get much of an education on World War One, so I've had to go back and kind of almost educate myself on why we get into World War One, and what happened, and all that stuff. That but I, if I remember correctly, I don't think that in World War One the Germans had the the genocidal motivation that the Nazis had. They weren't looking to, you know, um, it'll annihilate, you know, ethnically cleanse a group of people. This is true. That that's why you see in this film there are elements of. Um, the disgust that you see on the the Kaiser's face when he sees some visiting Nazis yes, the during SS, a dinner scene. Precisely, Himmler well, comes to see him Himmler at dinner. Comes to visit what a great scene that was! That was a great yeah. scene. And, that um, was a great scene. He he's exp well, the, uh, Himmler is discussing their methodology and all the testing that the they're doing, the experimentation that they're doing, they're doing on doing. young people, and, and you can see the disgust. In general. And just the, just the, the the enaction the enactment of murdering people yeah. in a specific way yeah. without them and just as as lab rats exactly and it's it's it's, a, horrifying. it's really a horrifying thing and, and yet is. at the same time you do get that true feel of you the do. World War II intermingling with the old school. I love the way the uh, I love the way the exception uh, is a very personal. It's a very homespun it kind is. of film. It's a very single. It's all in one location. It's, it's a big mansion. It's one family. It's yeah. mansion. It's the Kaiser. It's Christopher Plummer. It always beguiles me how in all German films everybody has a British accent I know. when they're doing Germans. That you think, for God's sakes, great actors could do a German accent. Well, no, I thought they would do. A, Plummer did a, a German. A little bit. Jai Courtney did a, a German. A little bit. A little bit. But generally speaking, in a lot these of times kind of it films, is British. It is a British accent. They just do it as a, maybe because they're British people generally making these films. 
I, I think their resentment for the Germans is so much. Yeah, but if you're gonna, they did bomb half of London. They did, but for they, the accuracy of the period of as, as a performer, yeah, these I would films, like so to do the, the accent. Be, like totally that's what drove me nuts about Brian Singer's film Valkyrie. Tom Cruise is the star. I know he doesn't even bother to doesn't do a German try. accent. But that's not Why? his fault. That's the director and the producers of the film. Yeah, but they told should him have. Not to. I agree. He they did the have. British accent for for uh, Interview with the Vampire. I know that bugged me from the second I saw the trailer. I agree. Um, anyway, my thoughts on this film with this. I. I really enjoyed this. Now, who film. played the girl? Uh, the girl it? is Lily James. She was on, um, she was on Downton Abbey. She's been in a bunch of films lately. She was in um, very cute. Woman. Disney did a Cinderella movie about a oh, year or two ago. Oh, I love that Cinderella that. movie. That was from um, 2015, and I love yeah, that. She's film. been in a lot of films, Lily James. Um, uh, and absolutely. She, she in this film plays the one of the housekeepers, one of the maids. Uh-huh. And one of the premises... You know what else she's in? She's in Pride and Prejudice she is. of the Zombies. She is in that. And Pride and Prejudice and yeah. Zombies. Yeah. I, I like that she's film, by the way. I, I, really I didn't like see it. it. I did but I think she's it. a very good actress. She she's is cute. good. Um, in this film, so Jai Courtney's character, he arrives, he's got to watch over the, the, the Kaiser. He is a, he is a German, a German Nazi as, man. Yeah, and he's there. Right. Um, he's there to guard. The guard, and he's also trying to figure out, in a way, um, not only um, what... What is the can the Kaiser be trusted? You know, because he's been exiled for twenty years. Right. He's what are his judge views? Him as judge him well as guard him. Basically, it's almost like, are we going to kill this guy or not? You know. And then, mm. in a way, I think the SS well, is I pondering. I think he knew that at the time. No, but I think that's what he his, was. Just his sent mission to guard. was. Right. He didn't know that that was what his mission was. Precisely. But I think that was part of it. Yeah. Um, and then also, they're trying to figure out. Who is this alleged British, British spy that is somewhere on the property? Yeah, there is an underground that is anti yes. uh, the German regime, of exactly. course. So we're uh, trying to figure it out. And so uh, we do find out someone there yes. is amidst this uh, whole world of the, the spy. Yes. And uh, I, I really enjoyed this Me film too. quite and a bit. There's I, a love story and there's there um, some great scenes. I thought Christopher Plummer... Um, was fantastic and uh, it There's might be. There's a wonderful little sex scene too. Though. There is a quick one, There's yeah. A nice one, that. Um, there might, you know, I could see this movie maybe getting some um, Oscar traction, maybe supporting oh, for Christopher Plummer. Nah. Probably not, but nah. I wouldn't be surprised. Throwaway movie. I don't think it's a throwaway film. It is. Really? Well, I mean, in terms of, 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 of Oscar or any kind of attention whatsoever in the I mean, award you never regime. Know. No, I don't when think so. When it was released in the summertime, a lot of times that doesn't help the cause. Yeah, no, it'll be but forgotten. But in my I opinion, I thought his performance was one of the best ones I saw of recent time. I love Christopher He was Palmer. great. He's so laid back. He's he so, does a so great job. He's so easygoing. Yeah. I love the way he's feeding the ducks. And, it was uh, good, good scenes. You know, it just has a very general relax. There's a great actor on display here. If anything, to see the exception and it's because of Christopher Plummer. Yeah, and his wife, I thought, I thought Janet, she was McTier, wonderful. Janet McTeer, Dynamite. fantastic in she this film. She was so good. I was captivated by her. I agree movie. with you Very 100%. impressed. I, I like the way she would talk to people, yeah. trying to protect her husband. That's just character study yeah. in the writing that is so brilliant in this The movie. whole cast is excellent. It's I thought very it was very well done. well done. I love the ending. Uh, I'm not going to go into no, that, but obviously. It was good. But, but the whole movie just has a great feel to it. You, you feel like you've watched a little bit of a, not an epic, even though it all took place mm-hmm. basically on one set, yeah, it still has a, a general feeling of. I can see uh, this being a play. Exactly so. And I thought Jack well, Courtney did his point. best work yeah. to date. Um, I think it was he's well finally done. given a chance to really act, and I thought yeah. he did a good job. It's a good little film. Yeah, check out Two Big Yeses for the Exception. The Exception, absolutely. Loved it. Um, moving on, number eight. Going to move on to number eight, which of course is the new Bruce Willis film. It's called Once Upon a Time in Venice. Direct to video. Uh, Direct to streaming. I don't know, think it's in no, theaters. It is in theaters. It's is playing it? in select theaters right oh, okay. now. Okay, I yes, think it is indeed. Um, I like this movie. I didn't expect to like this movie at all. But it's basically um, a John Wick ripoff, right? Oh, not at all. Really? Oh, God, no. He's not, looking for his dog the whole movie. Not at all. No, this is almost slapsticky in, in well, a Well, I sense. know it's a comedy. It is a comedy, and more so a comedy than anything. Okay. But John Wick is a hardcore revenge no, I know, movie. but I mean, I'm talking No, premise. no, no. This movie is is. Giddy. There are moments I laughed out loud so hard. Okay. I was. Uh, Adam Goldberg is in this movie. He's Tom great. Middleditch is in this movie. Thomas Middlestitch, yeah. Thomas Middlestitch. Is yeah. it Ditch or. Middleditch. Middleditch? Middlestitch? Middle Ditch. Middle, di- middle it's Ditch. You're right, Ditch. It is Middle, middle ditch. ditch. And of course, he's on. He's Silicon. in everything lately. He's on Silicon Valley. He's also doing great those show. Verizon commercials up the kazoo. Uh, he's very Middle thin, Ditch, thin, you are correct. A thin guy with mustache. Very funny man. I see him on talk shows all the time now. He plays uh, Bruce Willis's cohort. Uh, uh, Bruce is a private eye. He's been hired by. There's a great scene with Adam Goldberg, mm-hmm. who is a wealthy uh, real estate guy. He's trying to sell a. He's trying to sell a building 
to the Chinese, I believe it yeah. is, and somebody keeps painting these pornographic uh, scenes of him like getting tea bagged and Adam Goldberg getting, you know, butt rammed, and uh, it's hilarious. That's good. Hilarious. I haven't seen him in a while. I'll Adam tell you Goldberg. something. I know he's wonderful in this movie. He's great. Uh, the last time I saw him was in the. Uh, 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 the series, the the comedy series with uh, Jim Gaffigan. He was on Jim Gaffigan. Oh, really? Show. Okay. Yeah, so he was great while. on that yeah. show. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you something. This movie was really funny. Uh, my biggest shock was seeing Bruce Willis. I haven't seen him in. It's got to be you know a year or two goes by. But you don't know how old the films are that he's made already. Yeah, he's so popping out still. I'm telling you, he looks like your. He looks like somebody's dentist now. He he's got no hair really on his head except he doesn't even have the little attempt at John no. McKean kind of side yeah, yeah. essence that he had in the diehards. Uh, he just looks like him. They they didn't try and dress him up and make him look good. He looks like what he looks like. Um, well, I think he's embraced the bald head now, so that's all he does. Well, the yeah, but the brown head, bald he head. looks much older. I was I was a little surprised at how much older well, he Well, he's pushing 70. Is he pushing 70? He's in his late 60s. You're now. probably right. Uh, well, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think he's that old. I think I he's think so. He's definitely in his 60s. I think he's younger than... Uh, he's probably in his 60s. He's definitely in his 60s. Absolutely true. I think he's a little younger than his counterpart, Stallone and Schwarzenegger, which is what go. I was relaying him to. Okay. But this he's is a funny movie, anymore. though. I, I enjoyed this film a lot. I, I wholeheartedly recommend it. Yeah, he's it. only 62. Uh, we have some just great scenes. We go from this to that. Also, the guy who is... Uh, Lisa Bonet's boyfriend in real life. You mean husband, Jason Momoa. Momoa from, from Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. He's Lockheed. in this film. He plays a kingpin of a drug lordy and yeah. kind of guy. He's great in this movie. Cool. I'll tell you, this movie has a lot of... It's just entertaining more so than... I mean, I could look at some of the... You know, I, I watched The Recall. I watched... Uh, Brain on Fire. I, I would say this was the most entertaining of all the films I saw this week. Okay. No question. I enjoyed it so much. I mean, the whole dog thing is, is almost... Negligible. Yeah, it's almost... Yeah. It doesn't even matter. It's, okay. it's almost uh, irreverent, uh, irrelevant irrelevant to the entire uh, crux and, and motivation of the film. There is that part, but I, I think the dog actually gets kidnapped maybe halfway through the oh, film. Oh, right. I thought that was Yeah, good... it's no big shakes. Okay. Uh, but I'll tell you, it was fun. I laughed. So... There's some little gratuitous nudity from time to time, which is always nice, and uh, just, you know, Bruce is uh, hopping into the sack with these young babes, and... Uh, I mean, that's neither here nor there to you wondrous uh, people out there who don't enjoy that sort of thing and, uh, and are good Christians, damn it. But uh, I'll tell you, I, I enjoyed so this film. you like this. That's a yes. Thing. You recommend it's it. It's an absolute yes. I All enjoyed right. it. I liked it a lot. Cool. All right. Well, I would almost watch it again. Okay. I would watch it again. Cause it was well, a, that's a it good was measure. A kick. It was yeah. a kick to watch. It was fun. Okay. It was okay. So, number nine, um, we're doing opening night. We we're going to be doing opening night. It's a film that is uh, out now in probably just going to find the streaming online it's not getting i don't think it's in theaters anywhere look at our um, likes just horrendous i'm sorry one like so i tell us people are doing other things i'll tell you people don't give a damn about us anymore don't worry about it um so opening night stars topher grace uh tate diggs is also in the film right uh and a lovely uh, israeli actress named alana tau who is gorgeous and she's very good in this film okay uh the premise of opening night is pretty simple it is the opening night of a new broadway show Ah. Um, Topher Grace is a guy who gave up acting, and now he's just a, a like a stage manager, production yeah. manager, I just saw behind Topher. the scenes. I just saw him recently in a film. I mentioned him last week. It you was did. something I saw last week. Okay. Was he? He wasn't in the Belco. No. 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 He was in some. Anyway, I'm sorry. Doesn't matter. So he's got to manage this whole opening night, you know. So it's basically a ton of crazy actors behind the scenes. All these kind of mini crises is going on behind the scenes. Comedy. And he's a comedy, and he's got to um, he's got to wrangle everybody in and make sure they hit their marks and get on stage. And but it's because there's a bunch of actors in this film that you've seen in many many movies. Okay. Um, and Hayes she's in the film. Oh. She plays like an actress who's been a Broadway actress for a long time, who's kind of past her prime, who's taking the role for money. Um, this sounds like exactly describing pretty what Hayes did. Uh, the girl I mentioned, in Alana, film. Alana Tell, she's his um, ex girlfriend. And she's the understudy, um, and she eventually gets the chance to go on stage. Um, the premise of the play within the movie, it's J.C., I think J.C. Chavez, whatever, from, from NSYNC, plays himself. Ah. And he Is has... a fun movie? It's entertaining. Okay. In the film, he, J.C., plays himself, who has written a Broadway show about one-hit wonders. Okay. And so he's... 
this egotistical, pompous kind of a guy who is now doing his own play, trying to seduce all his castmates, that kind of a thing. Uh, and there's a bunch of other actors in some of you recognize who play different parts that are uh, part of the, the struggles that he's got to deal with. Um, so it's an entertaining movie. It's a play behind the scenes kind of a thing. It reminded me a little bit of that famous play, uh, Noises Off, oh, okay. which was made into a film, which I, I really like. I love that play. It's a lot of fun. Is that Steve Martin? No. The no, movie the was John off. Ritter. Oh, okay. But it's a famous play. Oh. It was just on Broadway a couple years ago. I'm kind of bummed I missed it. Oh. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Opening night, though, you know, it's not by any means a great movie. Um, there weren't that many really crazy funny gags or funny moments to it. Um, I smiled while watching it. I was entertained, but I didn't love it. So I'm probably going to just say a no to it because it wasn't anything that I was that almost tempted special. to watch it, and I kind of skimmed through it a little bit. Yeah. And I just said, if no, there's anything to watch it for is the girl, Alana Tal. Uh, she's she's excellent. Okay. She, to me, is the movie. All right. She's the heart of the movie. This is a long film, too. It's not a short movie. No, it's an hour and 40 minutes or whatever. Well, okay. It's not a two-hour movie. I like an hour and um, 30 minutes. Tay Diggs is in the film. He plays like um, a gay actor. Uh, him and one of the funnier gags, but it's not really that funny. Him and one of the female actors in the in the show are competing for this new actor that came on board as part oh. of the chorus. So they're trying to see whoever seduces him first gets the bragging rights, kind of a thing. Yeah, okay. You know, that's really the only like running gag throughout the film. So I'm gonna say a no to opening night. Unfortunately, it wasn't anything that I can really say run to see. Yeah. You know, if it's on HBO at some point, you're bored, maybe check it out. But don't I'd make like it to effort. see a gay man and a lesbian woman. Attracted to each other and you know have children. Could be. I know that's impossible, but yeah. that would be cool. Anyway. So anyway, uh, we're going to finish up with chips. Uh, right? We are going to. Uh, yeah, we are. Uh, some people may want to call this buffalo chips, but I say no. It is. Uh, it is chips. It is based on the '70s uh, television show with Eric Estrada. Eric Estrada. Who makes a little cameo in that's this film. He did. There's a lot of cameos in this movie. Michael Pena is very good. I last liked Michael Pena in that movie. War on uh, Everyone. You didn't you liked. like War on Everyone. I liked that His film. His co-star in this film is the director, good. too, by the way. Correct. Dax, Dax Shepard. Shepard, married to Kristen Bell, yes. who is also makes a little cameo in this. Um, she's wonderful. She is wonderful. And, uh, you know, I think she had just had their second child. And Probably. She, she's just in this very briefly. She plays his ex-wife, and uh, he refers to her very negatively throughout yeah. the whole film. He, he's still in love with her, and he wants to go back with her. But I'll tell you something. Uh, this movie was very funny for about the first hour or so. Then a little bit of a tragedy happens. Okay. About an, uh, this is an hour and 40 minutes long, which is almost a little too long for a, a comedy comedy. <clears throat> but, um, I mean, if it's a comedy, not quite a comedy like opening night, I yeah, can yeah, see yeah. where it might go a little bit longer. But this is a comedy. 90 minutes is enough. Yeah. I could have trimmed out. But there's something tragic that happens. Okay. To Dak Shepard, I'm gonna oh, right. I'm gonna give it away. Uh, something tragic happens to him, okay. and suddenly the film takes a little bit of a down drop. And uh, I, of course, it re it kind of redeems itself in a way because of something else that we find out. But yeah. um, I, I will say this: the script was very intricate. It was very well done. We had a, a rounded. Now he wrote the script and mm -hmm. directed this film. He did a pretty good job at just mastering, you know, a little story over there, a little story over there, a little story over there. In most great books of our time, there's always like two, at least two subplots yeah. around the main plot. Correct, yes. And that's pretty much where we go. Yeah. Uh, all sitcoms, in fact, always have three little stories. They do. The daughter has one thing going on, the son has another story going on, and then mom and dad are yes. trying to fight with the neighbor next door about whatever. So, uh, in pretty much in this film, uh, he masters it. And there's some great dialogue. I'm sure a lot of it was spontaneous. There's a lot of dick jokes in of this course. movie. There's some funny moments, though. Michael Pena is kind of a... Uh, he's an FBI implant. Uh, yeah. He's uh, he's kind of going uh, IA. He's going uh, undercover, more he's or less. He's investigating within the department. Right. He's investigating in the department because there's some evil going on. We have Vincent D'Onofrio just... Might as well just hang up his, uh, just keep that beard forever and always play a bad guy because yeah. that's all Vince does anymore. Except, of course, on Law and Order when he plays, uh, he yeah. plays a cop. But I like Vincent. I loved him in Me that too. serial killer movie that was directed by Jennifer Lynch. Came out about uh, six years ago now, in 2011. I love that film. It's called Chained. It's one of the most depraved and psychotic serial killer movies I've ever seen in my life. It really gave uh, Silence of the Lambs a little bit of a... Uh, it was mm -hmm. shocking. Yeah. It was horrifying. And she directed... De Jennifer Lynch directed yes. it. And Vincent D'Onofrio stars in it. He's wonderful. He's so subtle. He's a great actor. He's a great actor. He knows when to reel it in. Yeah. In this film, he doesn't reel it in. He just goes for the... 
goes for the, you know, wham, bam, thank you, Dax, for mm. giving me the role. And uh, he, he does a good job. But I tell you, Dax plays kind of an offbeat, almost like a Gomer Pyle. Uh, kind of, you don't know who Gomer Pyle is. I know who Gomer Pyle is. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, from Andy oh, Griffith. Jim Neighbors? Okay. Yes. Well, well, Gomer Pyle always, uh, he seemed kind of stupid on the outside, yeah. but inside he always came up with great obs mm. observations. He was very bright. He was very intelligent. He just had that voice like Sergeant yeah. Carter. You know, he talked like a buffoon, more or less. But And then he had that singing voice, oh, he called me irresponsible. He had an almost operatic mm. baritone, which was so bizarre. But uh, I like chips. I'm, I'm going to give it a thumb. I'm going to give it a no. I, I'm, I'm really right on the fence with this yeah. film because it, 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 the funny parts were funny, but they were a little few and far between. Uh, took itself a little seriously, more towards that hour mark. So And then it got back into the comic yeah. groove again, but by then it was too late. I'll be um, honest, I'm probably never going to watch it's it. It's not a movie for... Uh, I'm sorry. You know, it's a, I, I will say this. And, and this really is the, the, the crux of many a comedy film that I see in my life. I notice if I'm in a good mood, yeah. if I sit down, maybe I, I don't drink, but if I just sit down and I'm, I'm feeling good and I'm like, okay, entertain me. You know, entertain me. Da, da, da. A little Nirvana for you, my mm -hmm. friend. You know? Yes. Of course, they weren't British. They were a Seattle band. Mm -hmm. But uh, and Jimmy Hendrix was from Seattle, you know. He, I think I knew that. buried there, too. So was Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was from Seattle. And I didn't know. Yeah, he was from Seattle. And then he went to China and became a big star. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, regardless. Um, there is some... I forgot what I was talking about. You were saying that when you're sitting on the couch about, relaxing... You're sitting on the couch, you're relaxing. You're just kind of in that mood. You're in a good mood. It's like you don't really even give a damn. You have checked your brain. It's late at night. You're tired. You just don't care. I found myself laughing a lot. I did. I There was just silly absurdity. If I had gone to the theater and seen this film and paid my, you know, $18 yeah. to yeah. see this film, I probably would have said, oh my God, what a waste of money. But to just simply sit here and watch it on my television, uh, it was... Uh, acceptable. Uh, acceptable, and it was it was semi-entertaining. Uh, uh, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say no in the long run. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, to recap these, this week's uh, entertainment choices, um, yeah. uh, I gave a yes done. to... I suppose we're done with tonight's show. Yes, you know, it's been an it hour. It went by very quick. It did, it flowed nicely. We weren't even funny tonight, I'm sorry for that. No, you know, we don't usually, have to be funny every week. It can be uh, you know, just interesting and engaging. Sometimes we want to be funny, but don't we, we always, can't always be funny. Stop so criticizing that's, yourself. That's why we have such a miserable audience it's, No, it's because, I think because since Bid Chat was offline for a while with the upgrade, Nobody gives I a think people ass. just left... I, want to thank I don't all think you, it's us. I want to thank all you folks for calling. Those of you that are watching, thank you. All you folks who called in. Thank all you. you folks who gave us those LOLs and those little bubbles of love. We that, appreciate that it. We didn't see one of tonight. <laughs> I want to give you the... I want to give you the, the, the fickle... Yes, yes, ...mastication yes. of brain-damaged fate. And uh, so we, we go on. So as I was saying, it's a yes for Legend with Tom Hardy. Yes. Uh, it's a really great performance Just film. Just because of Tom. Because of Tom. If it was any other actor, Mr. I might have not Tom even watched Hardy. it, to be honest You may with remember you. Tommy played Bane in The Dark Knight. Yeah, Night. if you don't know who Tom Hardy is, you're yeah. a rock. Yeah. Mad Max, I mean, he's great. He is wonderful. Um, you... You did the recall. I like the recall. I didn't love it, but I'm I'm giving it I'm giving Wesley it a Snipes. moderate kind of a yes up, but just to see Wesley again. I, I thought it was entertaining. Cool. It was okay. And I gave a good similar uh, feeling. To yes. The mechanic. Entertaining mechanic resurrection was very entertaining. There you go. Uh, leave your brain at the door. Action. Great set pieces. Uh, reliable Jason Statham. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I would say it's it's worth checking out. Brain on Fire with Chloe Grace Moritz, an actress in the making yes. here. We're really seeing a girl who uh, goes into a psychotic breakdown before mm. your eyes, and she does it brilliantly, I have to say. I believed every every moment that this girl put on the screen. She is completely a reliable... Mm. No doubt she's fantastic. No doubt fantastic. she is an up-and-coming Oscar, Oscar winner, winner. Yes. Par perhaps. I hope so. I hope so. Because I think she's really good in this movie. Uh, it, it's a it's a one note film. Uh, we get very very sick, and then hopefully we get better. I'm not going to let you know okay. whether that happens or not. But it's a very rare disease that uh, you know it, it happens to some people. Some people are saved. Some people are not. Okay. Only because it's a very hard uh, disease to diagnose. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's the problem. Okay, eyes on me. You eyes on me. The Tupac Shakur biopic. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it. I'm giving it a yes. Um, it's a little long, but overall I think it's an important film because of who he was and yes. what he represents among the, you know, uh, the pantheon of, yeah. of music. 
of noteworthy musicians. And uh, just, you know, it's a good examination of a very significant figure yeah. in the African-American culture um, who really strived to do something revolutionary. And so for that, I say it's worth seeing. And just like the penis of many a black man, it's a, it's very long, and you really can't cut any yes. off to to. I know, know you enjoy harping bring, on such things. To bring the, the, the film down to a, a circumcised, abbreviated cut, <laughs> one would not want to do such a thing. Yeah, we and don't want to. We don't want to do that. So uh, I, I I do want to actually. I was going to see this film today. Yes. I was thinking about it, and then when you told me you were going to go, I said, "Oh, good, I'm off You're the hook for that." Yeah. And I uh, I. Well, just, luckily you went and saw a Rough Night the other day. I did go see Rough Night last Friday. I always go on that. Friday yeah. night show. I, I don't know if we. What do we have opening this week? I think this week is Transformers. Oh, and that yeah. opens tomorrow. That yeah, opens that's, Wednesday. Yeah, maybe something I'm else. No design to see Transformers um, at all. I'm not dying. So to you see can it. go see it. I, oh, I didn't even see the last one yet. Oh, well. I kind of gave up on those movies. You better not go then. Well, no, I like to see you movies have to in see order. movies in order. I do. We're still waiting for you to get through, you know, the next 28 episodes of Twin Peaks so you can start talking about the No, not 28. Um, well, you probably got a 20. good... I, well, there's all only, second there's 30 episodes in the entire two seasons. Well, I, I watched six of the first season. Uh-oh. Tyler just came out. That means he's got to make a... A problem in the bathroom. Okay, real quick then. In France, that would be a wee wee. Okay, so a rough night is a yes for you, a rough right? Rough night, it's a yes. Okay. Yeah, it was entertaining. Two big yeses for Two the big exception. Two big yeses for the exception. I love we both Christopher loved Plummer. It. I'd watch, Great film. I'd watch Christopher Plummer fart jingle bells. Yeah. I'd uh, watch him plumb a toilet. I, would you? Would yeah. you watch him be a plumber? Why not? Uh, what about Amanda? Amanda Plummer. Uh, his daughter, maybe. We both met her. What if she helped... Uh, plunge the toilet. I would, yeah, that's cool. As a plumber. I want to know if him and her are close. Are they on good terms? I think what? they are very close. That's good. Well, I talked to her for about three hours. I know, we met day. her at the same place. I know, I met her at the... Uh, Chiller Parsippany Theater. Parsippany Chiller Theater. Like five years I ago. I stood out there and chatted with Amanda Plummer for probably about... Well, I probably talked to her for about an hour, and then I went and hung out with the penthouse pet of the month. Oh, nice. Who was there, and I stayed, I stayed with her for the rest of the time. Nice. I sat next to her and just... And... <laughs> And well, anyway, that's another <laughs> story. But uh, I had a great time with her. I really yeah. did. So um, security removed you. There you go. No, no, not at all. No, oh, I. No, we 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 hit it off. Good. Uh, once but upon anyway, a time in once Venice. Once upon a time in Venice. I I really enjoyed this film. It was silliness. It was stupid. But it, it's everything that a movie is supposed to be. It was great entertainment. Cool. It was uh, fun. It was good to see Bruce again. He's almost like an insignificant part of the film. Yeah. All right. He. I mean, this movie is really based around the insane characters that as Thomas Middleditch is yeah. wonderful in this movie. It's a great little film. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Not a great film, but it's it's most entertaining. Okay. I'm glad Opening to hear. night. Opening you night. Did not care. Uh, for it. I didn't love it. It was entertaining, but it wasn't great. It was Topher Grace uh, is a stage manager behind the opening of a new Broadway show, and he has to manage all the crazy characters. Um, yeah, I can't really say run out and see it, so I'm going to say no to that one. Okay, and, and of then course, chips. chips, I'm giving a no also to. I'd also make a, like to make a little shout-out to my friend Bill, uh, who is 91 years old, and he might even be watching this show after we... It is post-produced by Mr. Chris It'll be Pitt on YouTube in about two days. It will indeed, Bill. Uh, well, by the, time Bill uh, by the time Bill's watching it, he'll be watching it. He won't have to wait two days. Well, that's true. So there's no point in you saying that. You should just say, I'm Hi, saying Bill. that to Good people. to see you, Bill. Hey, Bill, thanks for <laughs> but watching. But Bill always pointed out to me, in fact, he did the last time I spoke to him, he said, you know, when you guys do your recap at the end, it's like a whole other review. It goes on so long. Well, I, it should be a quick thing. Yeah, it should be a quick. We should just kind of show... I'd like it to be quick. We should have our producer in post-production mode just do that whole recap, perhaps on the screen. Have you ever watched a recap? Uh, You've no, never I watched no, it. I, I you don't know what I do to it. I can't watch these so shows. So why don't you watch it? I don't have the patience to watch this. I do a whole thing. I put do a, you? I have a green yes and a red no. I have the poster. No. We're split screen. I do really? a whole thing. Wow. Did you watch this? I'm telling you, man. My co-host doesn't even watch the produced program. Well, you know. All he does is complain, complain, complain. I do want to thank uh, some of you who did complain about last week's black and white show. There Nobody There is did. going to be a uh, support group for people who are anti-black and white. It's going to be right next to the AA meeting yes. uh, down at the county. BWA. Yeah, down at the county uh, uh, veterans uh, uh, hall. Uh, we're all going to be down there protesting the uh, black and white essence of last week's show. I almost boycotted watching it. I hate to admit that, but... You never finished I, watching I, it. No, I really didn't. I only watched You said it. you were going to. I watched about 20... You promised me you were going to finish watching it. I did? You said, I promise I'll watch all of it before Tuesday. I, but I lie so much. How can you I tell know. what I say is what is true and what is not? Listen, we live in a Donald Trump, an alternate facts society now. So, you know, if I tell you... But I will watch it eventually. eventually. No, this is true. Yeah, when I'm 80. I don't know why. 
why, but hey, I Hey, Chris, uh, you know what I watched the other day? Uh, Chris. You remember uh, 30 uh, years uh, ago uh, when I, we did that episode? Chris, I just started watching the end of episode 30. Uh, uh, yeah, And then exactly. I'll die. And they'll take me away and they'll That's what we're burn doing. me to we're a We're doing crisp. dialysis banter at that point. Yeah, right. Oh, there we Sitting go. Sitting next to each other. Anyway, yeah, no. so yeah, I, was it a yes or no to Chips? A no, right? I said a no. Okay. I said a no. But but a mild no. The first hour is entertaining. And then uh, it just goes and downhill. And then it just kind of fizzles out. All right. But well, I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a little bit. It's a two and a half star film. So what do you give it a two and a half star film? Yeah. Do you give right. it a no or do you give it a yes? Okay. It's, uh, it's really just a roll of the dice. And uh, I'm going to okay. roll the dice negatively. I'm going to say most people are going to get tired of it after an hour or so. But uh, there's some of you with a juvenile, brain-damaged sense of humor. And you'll enjoy the whole film. You'll okay. probably, in fact, uh, I know people that have probably watched this movie four or five times. Because they're demented in that certain way. Fair enough. Anyway, so there that, we go, folks, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you we next week. You. There's only 114 of you tonight. It's and that's okay. heartbreaking for my humble soul. I could care less, really. Really? You harp on it, I don't care. I harp I'm on it. I'm still going to be doing the show regardless. Well, you know. Anyway, so, uh, so again. The marks we are given. Again. So, therefore, I am Harpo Marks. I know. <laughs> I get it, Harpo yes, Marks. Yes, yes. Anyway, again, <laughs> I'm going to say it again. What? Yeah. Check us out on YouTube, Film Banter, Film Banter on Facebook. Yeah. And email us, filmbanter at gmail.com. So good to hear from you tell us what you think. So so good that all of you called in. It was just such a joy to take all your calls. We really enjoyed it. Thank you. And thank you, Kimberly McMahon, once again, for being the only true love that we really have on this entire episode. Well, hey, I'd rather have one fan than zero. I'd rather have one fan than zero, too. All right, guys. Be well. Good night, everyone. And be nice to each other. Try to be nice to each other.